30 seconds in and away we go ladies and gentlemen and today what I'd like to talk to you about is cowering in squad leader and how it's modeled as per rule A7.9. But before we do that, what I'd like to do is first make a little, ah there it is, the mic is on, great. Um, so before we uh, go any further, what I'd like to do is let you know that we're drinking Earl Grey tea. We're wearing our squad leader C3I GMT t-shirt from, uh, I believe it's uh, the C3I store, that's what they call it, and uh, we'll put on an appropriate thinking cap. Now speaking of thinking caps, there I got them right here. You guys remember my Raiders uh, hat? Well, it's too hot to wear in the summertime. And guess what? We lost the pom-pom. Yeah, I lent this to my son. He didn't like the pom-pom, and I thought the pom-pom added character. So this is too hot for the summer. Let's put it there. Yep. And the other thinking cap we have is uh, it's actually a liner, not the actual with the camo stuff. And this, is, this gets a little bit heavy, and it's kind of jiggly. But uh, it has served its purpose over the years, it's still going strong. So we decided to compromise. And guess what? New thinking cap guys. Go Raiders, go. Am I really a fan? Well, I like the logo. Let's say I like the logo. And uh, I could be more knowledgeable about football than I, than I am. But hey, it is what it is. So let's go on to cowering. And cowering is really interesting because, hey, what other game do you know where it's modeled so well uh, as opposed to everywhere else? Not that I play any other game. I mostly play squad leader. So the first example that I'd like to bring to you, and I've just noticed I didn't name my leaders. That's bad luck. Hold on a sec. You don't go anywhere. I'll pause on my end and name come to come up with some interesting names. Lo and behold, we named our leaders. So let's go back to cowering. I, I know I went back and forth between the thinking caps, the T, and all the other paraphernalia, but cowering is covered in Chapter A and the Rule Alpha Seven Point Nine. And basically, what it, it happens uh, when it, the basic trigger is. When you roll doubles on the IFT. Um, so when we roll a 2d6, here you can see my roll was a 4-1. If I rolled snake eyes or two fours, that would have been a cowering event. So looked up the probability of that occurring, it's probably around 16.67% or one-sixth for those of you that like fractions. I don't particularly like fractions. But anywho, so let's take a look at some in-depth examples and uh, talk about them a bit. Okay, so uh, we'll remove the snipers that we don't, for the combatants that are not participants at the moment, and we'll have a, uh, we'll have a, a hero with a squad And uh, let's give the squad a flamethrower. Here we'll have mayor. Uh, 
with an LMG and a first line squad coupled with a a conscript. Okie dokie. And we'll leave our um, we'll leave our um, sniper there. We'll put the um, Russian sniper here. And we'll put a, a, a commissar there with a 458 and a DC charge, a 447 with a light machine gun. And then here we'll put a, um, a conscript and a 447. To Pitsov on the back. And we have a fanatic with an LMG. So, first and foremost, the first major difference between a hero and a leader is that only a leader can prevent a squad or a multi-man counter from cowering, except if they are conscripts. Now, there is such thing as inexperienced, and inexperienced squads are designated with the letter G, uh, unless an SSR says something else. So a leader, if stacked with a leader, a green squad can exempt itself from a um, uh, cowering in their attack. Uh, however, however, um, a conscript, as per A19.3, is always subject to a, a cower to cowering, even if uh, the attack is leader directed. I think I was playing that wrong. It goes to show that uh, reading the rules pays dividends. Okay, so let's go back to this example. So if Mueller is attacking, right, and let's say he wants to break up this fire group, so he wants to attack the 447 with the LMG. Because technically speaking, if they're assaulting this position, the LMG can fire here, point blank at four. Uh, depends if it's an assault move or not, with what uh, modifiers were, would occur, and if they pay two points to get into the um, into the um, shell holes or not, and then subsequently fire another four there. So he's covering two hexes, one with its inherent firepower, one with the support weapon. And if they want to break this fire group, group up, what they need to do is um, probably use all their firepower there, unless they get a, a lucky hit with the flamethrower. So let's fire first with the flamethrower to see if we can eliminate them. And if we are firing with the flamethrower, it is a 12 even shot. So let's see. And let's not forget that it has a breakdown number of 10. So if we roll a 10 or more, the um, flamethrower has run out of fuel. So here we're, let's say it's our prep, okay? We're gonna declare a 12 even attack here with the flamethrower. So let's roll on the IFT. We got a seven. Seven on the twelve, I believe, is a one check. And the other thing is, is that I use this chart or the equivalent that I made in PDF to make sure that uh, the terrain effects are are taken into consideration. In, in this case, because we're firing a flamethrower, if we had rolled a three or less, um, it would have resulted in um, in a um, in a possible flame. So with a seven on the 12, it's a one check. Let's roll that. And this guy is now broken. Now the important thing uh, to mention about, um, about flamethrowers is um, as per alpha 22.1, the flamethrower could, could have conceivably have cowered and um, there was nothing the hero could do about it. 
However, if that flamethrower was with a hero, and the hero cannot use his uh, heroic DRM on a flamethrower attack, there would have been no chance of it cowering. So in the worst case scenario is that if that squad fired, the attack would have been resolved on the A table. Because what cowering is, is one shift to the left on the IFT. Uh, as opposed to green squads, not with leaders, would have a two column shift and so would conscripts and for conscripts, it's regardless whether they're stacked with a leader or not. Okay, so we broke the, that, those, dude, those dudes up. Now we can use our inherent firepower here. And um, that would have been a four uh, minus one attack because the, in this attack, the hero can exert um, their, his inherent firepower but he can also use the adjacent squads. So let's say uh, we have a four there, that's a five, uh, and then an eight, that makes it a 12 attack, uh, up one, because uh, the hero can use his heroic DRM to affect the whole fire group, not only the units that are stocked with it. So is this wise to do? Let's go and find out. And I really I rolled other. Well, I rolled an 11. Didn't make any uh, difference. However, uh, the main difference with the heroic DRM is that heroes cannot prevent cowering. Only leaders can, and so can commissars. Where's Ivanov? Put the little dude in here. So that was an ineffective attack. And they prep fired. Let's clone this. And it goes without saying that Mayor here is the uh, king of the king of the hill because he can exert his attack and prevent the unit from cowering. So here we go again. Uh, this is a six up one attack. And notice that minus two DRM really makes a big difference. So let's do that. Hey, there's your doubles. It's not cowering because it was leader directed. So that comes to a nine on the six table, which I believe is missed by one. So he prep fired. Um, so uh, for all intents and purposes, Ivanov is considered a leader. And that's what the rule says, if you look at the uh, rules for commissars. Let's try our Earl Grey. Nice and sweet. So let's say there isn't any movement. Get rid of the moves. And it's our turn to fire back. Notice that this conscript is fanatic. Fanatic units, as well, are not subject to cowering. How did he become uh, fanatic? He incurred a heat of battle uh, instance the turn before and became fanatic. So if we roll a six up to here to break the attack, to break the fire group, I would consider it worthwhile. And let's roll. 10. Well, we did not break the mach uh, light machine gun, but we wouldn't have cowered in any case. So they, these guys are marked with final fire. Uh, Ivanov is with a conscript. Um, so he cannot prevent the um, conscript from cowering, but he can prevent the 447 from cowering. Hmm. So it's either a 4 or an 8 attack in this case, or 4 or, uh, or a 6. No, either an 8 or a 6, because the, the, you cannot prevent the um, conscript from cowering. So it's either an 8 or a 6 if, if I guess, uh, 
you would have the conscript in that case. That's interesting. So, according to the rule book, leaders cannot prevent um, squads from cowering. So, I, I imagine that if a conscript cowers, his firepower would be halved and quartered for long range. Let's roll and find out. You know, it's an in, un, in, in sequential. There you go. Um, all right. So they uh, final part. Okay. Let's uh, consider another scenario. Let's bring him back to life. He's no longer DM, and we can remove all prep and defensive fires. Let's consider another scenario. Um, yeah. Let's say it's their movement phase, the Russian movement phase. And um, they want to get rid of this, uh, these folks here. Um, typically, this would not be an assault move because uh, he would need one well, it can be an assault move. Yeah, one, if you we go out in the open, uh, but if we don't go out in the open, it'll be two and four to place the uh, DC charge. So let's do that. Non-assault movement, two to there. Uh, the flamethrower can fire at him at 24, even, no modifiers, which is suicidal. So seven out of 24 is really bad. It's a three morale check, it needs a five or less to pass. Six breaks by one, by one, but does not ELR. Let's consider an ELR three. All right. Um, let's say for all intents and purposes, he, um, he uh, survived at all the attacks. And let's bring him back to life. Yep. He survived all the attacks and he managed to place the DC there, okay? Let's roll for the attack. That's going to be on the 30 table. 11, gee, I'm rolling like a stormtrooper here. Anywho, let's say instead of 11, we roll boxcars. Normally boxcars would be a dud. So let's say two fours for an eight. The two fours, means it's doubled. Do DC attacks cowl? And the answer to that question is no. So you have quite a few things that do cower, that do not cower, okay? You have leaders and single man counters, berserk units, fanatic units, fire lane, uh, IFE, which is, inf which is infantry fire equivalents and guns, they have that, and on, uh, and on vehicles, canister, aircraft, and uh, Ritz and Fins, we'll get to that uh, in a moment, snipers, ordnance, OBA, and vehicular uh, fire, uh, do not cower, and also close combat and DC resolution attacks do not cower, as we seen in this example. Okie dokie. Um, so we covered the major difference between leaders and, um, and, um, and heroes with respect to cowering. Now, leaders and heroes also attack differently. And I believe you, you have to look at rule, uh, alpha 15.23 to see how, um, uh, different leaders are. Uh, with respect to their attacks. There's a major difference there. But what they do have in common is that the units themselves, the leader and the hero themselves, do not cower, but only the leader has the ability to prevent a multi-man counter from cowering. Okay, so let's, let's, um, let's consider another attack. Let's put the Soviet player on the side for now like so, 
going back into the movie scene. And take the sniper out. I didn't see it being activated. Put in the American sniper because we're going to use Americans now. Okay, so let's say we have drones here with a regular squad and an MMG right there. And here we have a green unit, an inexperienced unit. Uh, for some inexplicable reason, he's mining the HMG. So it's the beginning of the German movement phase and he wants to create a firelink. Uh, the moment he sees these boys come into the picture. So he will attack the initial hex normally, which would be, he can use his inherent firepower, it won't add much to the attack, uh, but it will be an eight. And let's say you saw it move down there, an eight down one. Made it. Now, technically speaking, he should have a fire lane with four residuals, I believe. Like that. Had he cowered, then, uh, he would have only a fire lane of two residuals. Now, once you put down the residuals and you go to attack again, let's say this is another assault move. Let's uh, attack and see what it gives us. It, uh, we rolled a, uh, a five. Let's say we rolled a six. Uh, residual firepower, once it's laid down, is not subject to cowering as well. And that was all part of uh, Alpha 7.9. Um, so we covered heroes, we covered conscripts, inexperienced units, uh, flamethrowers, and DC attacks. Okay. Now, the other thing you need to know is that certain nationalities and unit types do not cower. So I don't have the Finns here, but according to the national characteristics for the Finns, which is Alpha 25.7, um, Finns do not cower unless they're conscripts. Notice uh, the word conscript and coward start with the same letter. Interesting little factoid. Okay, let's put uh, the... Uh, Americans and their little fire groups away. And put the leaders and these units back. And replace them with um, our good friends, the, um, the, um, the British. So let's put a nice 8 minus 1, a 4, 5, 8, an LMG there. And put him on top. In the middle, we'll put a couple of four, five, sevens. Remove the moves. And again, an elite unit with a flamethrower and Freiburg there. It's the Brits uh, fire. Uh, it's the Brits prep fire phase. So Winchester is going to go first and take a six up one attack against them because he wants to break up the fire group again. So let's do a six up one. Plus two for the wall, minus one for the leadership DRM. Let's do it. I have no clue what's going on. Elevens, twelves, twelve I didn't get yet. I must have gotten only one good roll. Anyways, that's ineffective. Um, as we all know now, uh, there was no way they could cower and the reason why uh, is not because they're with a leader, it's because they're 
either elite and first line, and their nationality is British. Uh, so here we have an eight up two attack, trying to break up that little fire group. Let's see what happens. Eight up two. That's a better attack. Uh, so that would be a, a that would be a a five plus two seven on the eight table. That's a one check. So let's do the one check on the conscript first, and then the four four seven. One two. I'll break. And good old Brits. So even if they rolled uh, double twos, uh, they wouldn't cower. And that's uh, a game changer, really. Break and break. And they prep fired. Actually, yeah, all of them prep fired. Now, here, good old uh, Freiburg. Doesn't matter if you can. If he, um, if he, um, if he directs the fire or not, because he, uh, the multi-man counter is an elite unit and, and British, so it doesn't cower. It's flamethrower attack won't fire, uh, cower. So we got a 12 even shot there. Hmm. Eight on 12. That's another one check, I believe. Yeah. Okay, let's see what Mueller is going to roll. He needs an 8 or less, otherwise he's wounded. Makes it. Now, again, uh, Mueller cannot use his leadership DRM to affect the morale check for the 467. So let's roll for the 467. Uh, he passes. Now, it would have been an 8 up 1 attack for. Uh, for Mueller because he's holding the flamethrower. Uh, it, it wouldn't would have made a difference either way. It would be a one check. I'll just double check that real quickly. Now, getting back to the their turn to fire back, let's say. Uh, now Mueller is uh, Mueller is attacking with a flamethrower. So that would be another 12 another 12 even attack. He cannot apply his uh, his Heroic DRM to a flamethrower attack or to a DC uh, uh, charge attack. So let's do a 12 even attack against the British here. 7. 7 out of 12, I think, is a 2 check. Oh, it's a uh, 1 check. Is it? Yeah. It's a 1 check. So uh, Freiburg needs a 7. Does it make it? Squad 6 plus 1 is 8 is pinned. All right, and then both of them can fire their inherent firepower. No, they can't. Now, that's the other thing that uh, is occurring here. The moment Mueller uses a support weapon, he forfeits his inherent firepower. So it'd be, a, um, but can he still apply his leadership theorem, his heroic theorem? Big difference. Let's see if it makes a difference. A four up three or a four up two. Eight on the four is a complete miss. There you go. And by now we all know how Mayer kind of operates. Now just to recap, okay, um, cowarding under Alpha 7.9 is triggered by rolling doubles on a 2d6. There are certain attacks that are exempt from cowering and, and certain attacks that are um, do not cower, depending on the type of attack and the nationality of the units, and you could also say the state of mind. Berserk, fanatic is a state of mind that doesn't uh, cower. Uh, there is a major difference between leaders and heroes. We covered just a few, including the fact that I almost forgot that. Um, uh, a hero that fires a support weapon just forfeits his inherent firepower. And there's more to be said about heroic attacks. Um, and I led you to the right place in the rule book, I believe, under Alpha 15.23. It's very interesting 
to see uh, um, how uh, Audie Murphy has been uh, modeled there. Um, so we just uh, also touched on uh, the fin fins as per Alpha 25.7 and British elites and first line as per Alpha 25.45 uh, do not tower. Uh, conscripts do cower regardless uh, of leader direction or not, but green units uh, with single man counters are exempt from cowering as per Alpha 19.3. And the consequences is either one column for first line, second line units, two columns for conscripts and green units that are not accompanied by a leader. We also found out that it's important to note under Alpha 22.1, flamethrower attacks are subject to cowering, but not DC attacks. So, knowing that little piece of information, if you are going up against an opponent with a flamethrower, you can let him know after watching this video and reading the the, uh, the uh, rule book, because I'm not a substitute for the rule book, nor the numerous and voluminous uh, articles that were written in journals and uh, various online forums. Uh, yeah, you're armed with a little uh, tip. And you also know that residuals, um, in determining the amount of residuals, you have to take into consideration uh, cowering. But once the residuals are laid, it, the attack is not subject to cowering. That's it. That's a short and sweet uh, video uh, with a topic uh, about cowering and how it's modeled in Advanced Squad Leader. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. And thank you all once again uh, for all of the support you've given me and the views that you've uh, given me. Um, it's really remarkable and again um, the channel has grown it was at 665 it went down to 662 and now it's back up again at 670 so that's wonderful the other little tidbit that I wanted to share with you is on uh, YouTube um, let me get that screen for you okay so with respect to my channel what I like to let you know is that you the best way to find my videos is through the playlists. And I um, I have some other topics like food and comedy and hobbies, but mostly squad leader. So through the playlists is the best way to uh, find uh, my videos, especially if you uh, want to uh, if you're interested in Canadian taxation, because I do some of that as well. Uh, but the video that I wanted to show you was uh, the one I did about unhorsed. So I'm going to pause on my end uh, so I can find it and show you a, a, an interesting comment. So um, the fellow that posted this um, comment here, cool, thanks for posting, is Scott Cochrane. And I think he's the designer of the scenario that uh, I did on After Action Report or Play by Play After Action Report uh, for scenario J207 on horse. And um, I've been playing now that scenario for quite a bit, once uh, solo and started off a couple of other games. And um, there are a couple of uh, the fellows that I play with uh, every night uh, that are also interested in playing it. And it's a really cool scenario. I highly recommend it. Um, and it's also something that uh, uh, Jim Bishop commented on and uh, quickly gave me the lowdown on on um, Bocage. Yeah. So, with that said, um, I am going to bid you guys a great week ahead. Um, low roll, roll 
low, there we go, roll low, and um, have a great time playing and enjoying this game. Thanks for supporting the channel, George, over and out.